Welcome to our first video of our stallion reproduction series. Today we're going to go over some topics that will help prepare you for the upcoming stallion series videos. And while this is a learning opportunity, there may be some terms or images not suitable for younger kiddos. So let's dive into stallion anatomy and physiology. The role of the stallion is to produce semen to impregnate mares. That's his job. So in order for us to understand how this happens, we're going to take a look at a general overview of his anatomy and how this whole process works within his body. Here we can see a colored illustration of the reproductive system of a stallion, which is an uncastrated male horse. The copulatory organ of the stallion is called a penis. The penis lays inside a protective covering called a sheath. The sheath protects the penis from temperature, wind, trauma, basically anything that could potentially cause damage to the penis. The next part of the reproductive system is called the scrotum. The scrotum is a pouch of skin which covers the testes. The scrotum is held fairly close to the stallion's body and is important in regulating temperature of the testicles. Too hot or too cold affects sperm production, which occurs in the testes. There is a muscle called the cremaster muscle which can raise or lower the testes to help regulate temperature. Testicles are where sperm is created daily. Stallions should have two testes, both fully dropped into the scrotum. It is possible for one testicle to remain up in the abdominal cavity, but that's not preferred. These animals that have one testicle not dropped into the scrotum is called a cryptorchid. A fun fact is it takes 57 days for sperm to reach maturation. Before that time, the sperm is not fully functional and can't result in a pregnancy. So it takes 57 days for sperm to be able to go and do their job and create a pregnancy inside the mare. Other important parts of the reproductive system include the epididymis, which is connected to the testicles and helps with sperm maturation and holding, the vas deferens, the urethra, and the accessory sex glands. These include the vesicular glands, the prostate glands, and the bulbourethral glands. The main thing about the accessory sex glands is that these guys produce the seminal fluid during ejaculation. Let's take a look at the 57-day process of where the sperm starts and where they end up. So we already know sperm is produced in the testicles. From there, they move into the epididymis. The epididymis is comprised of three parts, it has a head, a body, and a tail. As the sperm moves into the head of the epididymis and finally into the body, the sperm continues to mature. As they continue along the epididymis path, they reach the tail. When sperm reach the tail of the epididymis, they are fully mature. And the tail is the holding center for the sperm until they are ejaculated to go off to do their job. Breeding managers in a stallion production situation will collect a stallion every few days to keep the production and the holding of mature sperm at an optimal level. When it's time to collect a stallion, the sperm moves into the ductus deferens and finally is mixed with fluids, which are produced by the accessory sex glands. These fluids are the seminal plasma that will be filtered out during collection. However, the fluid help the sperm move through the rest of the tract during collection. On the mare side, the fluids aren't really needed, so that's why we filter those out during collection and the plasma and those fluids will not be put into the mare. Finally, the sperm enters and is ejaculated from the penis during collection. Now wait a minute. We now know that sperm are produced in the testicles and during collection exit through the penis. But how are sperm produced? Well, hold on to your hats because this gets complicated. Hormones are the main players in how sperm are produced inside the testicles. Hormones are telling the stallion's brain and reproductive organs what to do. So let's take a look at the major hormone players inside the stallion's body. 
Now keep these hormones in mind because you might be surprised to find a majority of these hormones in play on the mare side as well, which we'll cover in our mare series. Let's take a look at the names of the main hormones that occur within the stallion's body. And then we'll look at how they all work together to complete the task of creating sperm. The hypothalamus and the pituitary are glands located at the bottom of the brain. The hypothalamus produces gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GNRH. The anterior pituitary, anterior meaning top, produces luteinizing hormone, known as LH, and follicular stimulating hormone, or FSH. The posterior pituitary, posterior meaning bottom, produces oxytocin. A couple other hormones that have major impacts on the stallion are testosterone and estradiol. Estradiol is a type of estrogen. Now, if you're sitting there going, man, I'm already lost, have no fear. Let's look at it another way. At the top of this graphic, we start with our brain. Remember, our hypothalamus and our pituitary gland are at the bottom of the brain, ready to make hormones for the rest of our job. So the hypothalamus is going to make GNRH, which then tells the pituitary to release LH and FSH. The other gland, the pituitary gland, is producing LH and FSH, which is waiting for that GNRH to come in and say, y'all can be released, go! So our LH and FSH were just released into the bloodstream. They're going to travel all the way from the bottom of the brain down into the testicles. Now, they both go to the testes, but once they get there, they have very different jobs. LH is going to go to a specific type of cell called a Leydig cell. FSH is going to go to a different type of cell called a Sertoli cell. The Leydig and the Sertoli cells both have different jobs. So the LH into the Leydig cells, which the Leydig cells then produ produce progesterone, which is in turn turned into testosterone. Now testosterone is our main hormone that tells the stallion to start producing sperm. So that LH is essential in the production of the hormone testosterone. FSH goes into the Sertoli cells, which then makes estradiol, which remember was a type of estrogen. Both testosterone and estradiol enter the bloodstream and go back to the brain to tell the brain, hey, we've reached an optimal level, you can stop producing GNRH. This is called a negative feedback, when something tells something else to stop production to remain at a certain level. Once those hormones reach an optimal level to create and to start sperm production, it takes 57 days from that first start of the sperm till the end of maturation where the sperm can go do its job. Within those 57 days, there are several phases and stages that the sperm go through. Now, this was a mile high view of the hormone balance and, and the complex relationship within the stallion. You can do a lot more research on those individual phases and stages and get a lot more in depth of what's happening. But hopefully this overview gave you a good idea of how it all starts. Another thing we want to talk about is during those 57 days, a lot can happen. Let's look at an example of our stallion, and maybe he gets a little fever. This fever can affect all sperm production in all stages. Because just though the sperm is taking 57 days, it doesn't go from one day to 57 and then they start over. There's sperm at every stage at every day. So today might be Monday. We're going to have sperm on day one, 
there's going to be sperm in there that might be on day 15 and on day 37. They're covering all stages. So that fever that our stallion gets affects a lot of sperm. So when our stallion manager goes for the next collection, and he gets that collection and he looks at it underneath the microscope, that fever might have affected those sperm in a negative way. They might show up with crooked tails or some other defect. And you might continue seeing varying defects for several weeks until all the sperm that was affected by that fever have been collected out. Sperm production can also be affected by other things, such as seasons, which can raise or lower testosterone production. Even light, which affects the hormone called melatonin. The nutrition of the stallion comes into effect for sperm production, and sometimes even injury can lower sperm production in the total output. Pretty much anything that goes on in that stallion's life will have a direct or indirect correlation to the amount and quality of semen that they're producing. That's why stallion management is so vital for the positive pregnancy rates at the end of the season. Those stallion managers have to do everything in their uh, capacity to make sure that that stallion is happy and healthy so he can do his job and have excellent semen quality for the mares to receive when they're ready to impregnate and inseminate their mares.